Hi, it's JW again, and it's another electricity meter. This one is a three-phase, three-wire model, and it's probably from the 1960s. So let's have a closer look at it and see if we can get it working. OK, here's the front of the meter. It's uh, made by Sangama Western, uh, model S29. It's uh, actually extremely large compared to a lot of meters. So there, the front of it's nearly eight inches across. And if we rotate it and have a look at the side, it's equally as large in that dimension. So nearly seven inches uh, projection from the wall that it will be fixed to. It's a three-phase meter, and slightly unusually, it's a three-phase three-wire, so no neutral connection. So let's have a look inside. And as if by magic, here we are with the cover removed. As before, it's a Model S29. Uh, it's made by Sangama Western of Enfield, Middlesex, England. Uh, three by ten amps, which is pretty low uh, in terms of rating. And of course, because it's a three-phase, three-wire model, it's a three by four hundred volts. There's no neutral connection. Uh, fifty periods or fifty hertz, and one hundred and fifty revolutions per kilowatt hour. That's a form two, and the serial number is T one seven zero five five. Here's the side view and see the current coil there at the bottom in the heavy copper wire with the voltage coil above in the black plastic tubular assembly there. The other side is exactly the same. And once again with the current coil at the bottom and the voltage or potential coil above. On the side there are some additional screws for various adjustments or uh, alterations when it was being assembled. Uh, readings on the front are on these uh, rotating pointers, uh, each of which goes in the opposite direction as is usual with these things. Uh, this one's just showing a reading there of one kilowatt hour. Here's a view from above, uh, there's a couple of adjusters there, and there's also a printed number in the centre which looks like S29-236. That's the back view, pretty standard, uh, got a little handle on top for carrying, and it just hooks up on a single screw there, and then there's two additional holes there and there to uh, secure it to the wall or board that it was fixed to. Uh, this one's actually lost one of its little feet here, which just holds it out from the wall, also it's got broken off at some point. There's the front casing, uh, it's got three uh, windows on the front, although if you have a look inside it's actually just a single piece of glass with that uh, central strap across the middle to divide it into three different parts. The uh, remains of some lanky old gasket there which yeah, is pretty horrible. Two screws to fix as normal and it's got the little holes in as well just to allow you to put a uh, sealing wire through there. Same again on the bottom. And there's that label which uh, proclaims it to be 131067, which uh, may or may not be when it was made. It could just be a label that someone stuck on there on that date or even on any date. So no uh, particular way of knowing when this was actually manufactured. Connections to this meter are pretty standard. Just under the two screws there. And there's your six terminals, to, two for each phase, of course, so in and out, in, out, and in, and out, in that order. And on the back of the cover there, there's a little diagram just showing the wiring layout. Uh, Faded air marked red, yellow, and blue, as would be the case in the 1960s, or sometimes uh, red, white, and blue. Terminals are fairly substantial, there's two screws for each. Cables would just enter in the bottom holes here, and again that's pretty standard for meters of this sort. Uh, here's the terminals inside, uh, so you've got the six terminals along the bottom, so it's uh, first phase in and out, or the red phase, uh, second or the yellow is in and out, and the third blue in and out over there. Uh, current uh, would flow through this uh, heavy copper wire here into the coil above and come back out over here. Uh, the middle one doesn't have any current uh, coil or anything else, it's just a direct link between the two terminals. 
and the uh, blue phase there, again it's just the uh, same arrangement with the wire going up to the coil and then returning out of that one. Uh, voltage uh, sensing is here on this uh, red wires and on here on the blue ones uh, over this side and we've also got some black ones in the middle which just connect to the uh, third phase in the centre. For testing purposes you can actually take out this screw and the same over there, that one there, and that will disconnect the uh, input terminals from the voltage line so that you can then inject current through it while supplying a different voltage to these wires here and that's obviously useful for testing purposes so you don't have to run it at some massive many kilowatt load to uh, see if it works or not. Well I've wired up this meter so we can actually see it working. I don't have a three phase supply here and uh, even if I did I wouldn't want to be running 10 amps at three phases because clearly that would be very wasteful so I've fixed this up with a kind of phantom load arrangement using this lovely 12 volt lamp which I've seen in other videos and uh, exactly how that works is the subject of another video I suppose. So uh, let's see if it does actually uh, rotate. Well that's not too bad, it's a bit slow because we're only using uh, 240 volts as the uh, voltage rather than 400. Uh, this is a close-up of the drive shaft. The uh, vertical shaft there is connected directly to the disc below and uh, that small gear is where the motion is changed from the vertical into a horizontal. And from the front of that left gear there's a thin shaft that comes through to the front panel which drives the indicators on the front display. Although it looks really large in this picture if I zoom out, you'll see how tiny it actually is. Right, this has been running for some considerable minutes now and it's just coming up to one kilowatt hour on the uh, dial there. And like all of these mechanical meters, it will run in the other direction if the current is reversed. Uh, 
And if anyone's dangerous enough to do this in their own house, just bear in mind that this is running from an isolating transformer on the floor to avoid uh, coming into contact with the mains. And the cable for that comes up here into that quick connect. That transformer is being used to supply about a 4 amp current and it's also tapping off the bottom there with the 240 volts. And that sort of wires into the meter in that horrible fashion. And then over there we've got that little 12 volt lamp which say should provide about a 4 amp current going through it. And of course the voltage on those yellow ones is 240 which uh, provides the uh, voltage there and I've had to take out some screws in there to uh, isolate the voltage and uh, current windings.